Nuggets, they are at number one, and the Mavericks are currently on the outside looking in, but their hopes are still alive. Let's show you all how this went down last night. Ramona Shelburne, Jason Kidd there, hoping that his team can keep his playoff hopes alive. We're going ahead to the fourth quarter here because Kyrie Irving put his team on his back in the fourth. Mavs down one here, goes all the way to the hoop and scores. When Kyrie's got it rolling like this, he is the best closer in basketball right now. I mean, when he gets it going clutch like this, you can't stop him. You cannot. Another look at this one. De'Aaron Fox loses him. The footwork, the movement, the man never stops going. And then again, spins, stays with it, stays down, fake. And over Davion Mitchell, that is not easy. No, Davion Mitchell is a great defender. And the King, they played this game. They didn't need to play this game and try to win this game, but they played trying to knock Dallas out. Kyrie Irving, he just went to work, though. While Luka Doncic was scoreless in the fourth quarter, Kyrie, 19 of his 31 points, game-high 31, were scored in the fourth. Two-point game here. Kyrie Irving all the way the other direction. Pulls up from three over Kevin Herter. That's good. That would just about be the dagger in this one. The Kings weren't quite going away, though. Once again, bang. Good to go. Beautiful pass, too. I mean, the vision. And plus, when, when Kyrie's got it going, just, just get it to him. Find yeah. him, wherever he is. You can Why is he even it. open? Kyrie Irving and Jason Kidd spoke after the game. Take a listen. No matter what's been said outside of that locker room, that group in there has been connected and, and trying to do everything to win a game. It's just sometimes, um, or some you know, seasons, the ball bounces the other way. Um, but they've been together. They still believe that they can get in. They, we all understand what the situation is. We need a little help. Um, but we have to take care of our business, and this was part of that process. I wasn't even thinking about a loss. I, I kind of was just focused on getting the win. Uh, the energy didn't feel like we were going to lose tonight, so I didn't come in at halftime uh, worried. <laughs> Well, that's good because the Mavs, they have now a 48% chance to make the play-in tournament, according to ESPN Analytics. They only have, though, a 9% chance to actually make it to the playoffs. Two games left to go here. Back with our whole panel. I want to start with you here, Brian. What did the Mavericks prove to you last night? That they're not giving up. You know, there was some talk earlier this week that the Mavericks might be worried about their draft pick and they might try to protect it by shutting down. Luca shot that down on Tuesday, and the rest of the team shot that down last night. Look, the, the Kings had reason to win this game. They were still not out of it for the number two seed, but they were able, and they played their whole roster last night, and Dallas just beat them. And to be honest with you, Malika, this was what the Mavericks envisioned when they traded for Kyrie Irving, the kind of star redundancy that you see from championship-level teams. Luca was not on his game at the end of this game, and Kyrie carried them home. And I'll just say this about this team. They have obviously shown that they've got some serious flaws. But last year, we saw a Luka-led team be behind in the playoffs to the Suns and come back and win it. And you're not going to have to convince Kyrie Irving that his team can come back from when they're behind. I'll just take you to 2016. So I still think the Mavs got problems, but they are not done, and they are a potent team if they're at the top of their game. Mm. Well, you know what? What I took from it, forget if they make the play-in tournament or whatever the case may be. I don't think that they're going to make it, okay? But what I do think that happened last night, and I, my biggest takeaway from it is that the Dallas Mavs and Mark Cuban better do everything in their power to re-sign Kyrie Irving this offseason. Because here's the, here's the thing. This is time for me to give Kyrie his flowers and appreciate what he brings to the table on the, uh, when it comes to the basketball court. Not only is he one of the most skilled, but he's the best closer in the game when it comes down to the fourth quarter. And I feel like we all don't give Kyrie enough credit for him being ready, meaning always in great shape. Because it's easy to do things in the first, in the second, in the third quarter. But when it comes down to the fourth, and you're able to take over the fourth quarter the way that he did last night, you have to give him that his props because he's in great shape. And so when I look at what Kyrie is doing right now, he's auditioning and he's letting the Mavs know that, hey, when I'm, when I'm, when I'm available and I step between these lines, I will not disappoint you. He hasn't disappointed really since the time he arrived in Dallas. So that was my Bryce. That was my thing that I took away from that game last night is that with all that's being said for us, the draft picks and whatever the case may be, 
You know, my guy Mark Cuban shooting slugs at Big Perk. I don't care. <laughs> you got to do everything in your power to sign Kyrie Irving mm. this like, offseason. If they, I think they will resign Kyrie Irving. I don't think there is that many teams out there that, that are going to create a market for him. And they, 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 he's been great for them, and he's fit in very well for them. They feel confident about their chances there. But Brian's right. If they were going to quit, it was going to happen a couple of games ago. And they had, they did have organizational meetings about whether or not Luka and Kyrie should play the, play this out. The mm. draft draft pick compensation. I mean, there's teams around the league going, what are the Mavs doing? Right. They might lose their pick here if they're not careful. Yeah. And mm -hmm. they're playing it out. They, they went and traded for Kyrie Irving. They have Luka Doncic on their team. You have two superstars on your team. And you never know what happens when you get into the playoffs. And they, they're well positioned to do it, you, despite having the 23rd ranked defense and 29th in assists per game. They have two superstars. Yeah, there's certainly plenty of aspects that are stacked against him. But 19 points in the fourth, that's the second most that Kyrie Irving has scored in a fourth quarter in a Dallas uniform. We know that he is a potent closer but that's not the only thing that folks were paying attention to last night when it came to the Dallas Mavericks you alluded to this perk Mark Cuban he spoke to reporters before last night's game in a little bit of an unofficial session and here's what he had to say about the Mavs frustrations and Luca's long-term future with the team take a listen that's the NBA people are going to get frustrated the best competitors are frustrated Dirk when we lost never left the season happy you know um, we didn't always have great chemistry every single season that's just the nature of the NBA. The players don't talk like that. You know, it's just like, hey, I'm here for the next 17 years. You know, he'd like to be here the whole time, but we got to earn that. I mean, before Giannis went, everybody saw, oh, where's he going? Where's he going? He's not staying. He's not staying. You know, before they, re you know, every Jokic, well, they haven't won yet. Da, 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 da. Every single player, Dirk, right? There's just no player, no great player, no superstar where they don't question, what are you going to do if you haven't won yet? We need to earn it. We want Luka Doncic to be here. We think he wants to be here, but we need to earn it. What's your reaction to what you just heard? Well, I think Mark was probably responding to Luka's somewhat concerning comments from the day before about right. uh, what he's felt like has happened over this last year. And so I actually respect Cuban for coming out and trying to address it. Uh, I'm not sure I agree with all of his thoughts on that. You know, in the case of Luka, I'm sorry, in the case of Giannis, he actually signed his long-term extension before they won. But his point is valid, guys, that, you know, if you don't, if you're in the conference finals one year and you're, and you're potentially out of the playoffs the next year, your superstar is going to be frustrated. And what the superstar wants is that you address the issues and try to get better for the year going forward. So without question, the ball is going to be in the Mavericks court. Whenever they get eliminated, whether it's going to be within this week or whether it's next week in the play-in or whether it's two weeks in the playoffs, it, they're going to have to make some adjustments to fix this roster, which they've made a step forward in terms of star power, but they've taken away from in terms of a complete team that made the conference finals last year. Ramona? Well, look, Brian, you covered LeBron early in his career. This is a very similar setup to the Cavs trying to find co-stars and other players to put around LeBron. Ultimately, that didn't work here. But Luka Doncic is, is not, is, no, that's the comparison to LeBron James. There's a difference in that LeBron's teammates, the, the people at Perks, you've been one of them. He gets his teammates paid. He elevates his teammates. And yep. thus far, we haven't seen that necessarily with Luka Doncic. Yeah. Earlier in the show, we ran some sound from Mark Cuban. But you were actually there. You were speaking with him what stood out to you well obviously he wanted to discuss exactly what went wrong with Jalen Brunson but he also wanted to talk about trying to actually re-sign their second leading scorer this summer instead yep. of losing him for nothing novel concept he said Kyrie Irving is the Mavericks top priority this summer I said can you be outbid because the Mavericks do have his bird rights they can offer a longer deal they can offer more money can they be outbid? Cuban said, I don't know. I guess there's always too high of a price, depending. Then he started to talk about the new CBA, the challenges of building a roster. I know this about Kyrie Irving. He felt disrespected by the Brooklyn Nets mm. in the contract negotiations. Uh, I asked Cuban, hey, is Kyrie a max player? He says, I'm not going to negotiate with you. Well, he will negotiate with Kyrie, and I'm pretty sure I know what Kyrie's answer to that question would be. All right. Well, you mentioned Jalen Brunson. They did have the opportunity to re-sign him. They didn't. What did Cuban say, though, about how all of that unfolded? Uh, basically, blame Rick Brunson, Jalen's father, uh, that negotiations were fine until Rick Brunson got involved. Now, he's disputing. I reported this last year when Rick Brunson went on the record during the playoffs and he said, hey, 
We went to the Mavericks in early January and said, if you put that four-year, $56 million extension, which is the most they could offer, on the table, we will sign it. Cuban is disputing that. He's shown text messages from his GM, Nico Harrison, from later that month, from uh, Brunson's lead agent, Aaron Mintz. But the, the simple fact of the matter is this. The Mavericks, going into last season, nobody's disputing they could have signed Brunson to a $56 million extension. Uh, now, what Cuban's also saying is they didn't have a chance to try to outbid the Knicks. They were never given a number. Dude, that's revisionist history. The number was reported mm. days before free agency actually opened. That's why the Knicks got hit with a tampering charge. The Mavericks decided that they were going to draw the line at, quote, Fred Van Vliet money, about five years, $105 million. Jalen Brunson's going to turn down four for 104 a chance to go right. uh, play for the, the staff that just hired his dad. And by the way, have a bigger role that he's thriving in in New York? No, it was never a difficult decision. Cuban says the money wouldn't have been a matter and Brunson was gone no matter what. Obviously, he wanted to get that off of his chest. I know this. Jalen Brunson's happy in New York. He got a bigger role. He got more money. He's thriving. The Knicks are thriving. And I'm pretty sure Rick Brunson's willing to take the blame for Jalen being in that situation. Right, and all of this comes on the heel of Luka Doncic expressing that he does miss Jalen Brunson. And it's hard not to when you look and see how he is playing in New York, what they have elevated to with him in that team. Tim McMahon, thank you so much for joining us here on NBA Today. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.